Hello everyone. In this session, we'll discuss about the second pass of an assembler. Now, in the first pass, we had already seen that the task of first pass was to extract out the symbols written into the assembly language program and store it into the symbol table along with their location counter. But in the second pass, the actual task of translation takes place. That is the conversion of symbols to the binary code. That means their corresponding binary code. For example, if it is LDA instruction written in the program, then LDA, the, the corresponding operation code that is 010 is for LDA is to be translated. So that task will be performed in the second pass of an assembler for all the instruction. Let's see how it performs. So starting with the second pass, first of all, similar to our first pass, we would be initializing our location counter with zero. Then after setting it to zero, we are going to scan the next line of the code. After scanning, we are going to check whether it is pseudo instruction or not. If it is pseudo instruction, then we'd be checking which pseudo instruction, whether it is ORG, Yes, if it is ORG, then we would be setting our location counter and we would be moving on to the scanning of next line of code. But if it is not ORG, then we would be checking what pseudo instruction it is. Then we are having left out with three options, either AND or DEC or HEX. So considering it to be AND, if it is not ORG, then we need to check whether it is AND. If yes, then we will complete our second pass of an assembler then our translation operation over gets completed over here. But if it is not end, then it would be either DEC or HEX that is hex. So what we are doing convert the operand to binary and store it into the location counter specified by LC. And again, we'd be going for the incrementing LC and scanning the next line of code. So again, checking whether it is pseudo instruction. If it is not pseudo instruction, then we'd be checking it for MRI instruction, MRI, memory reference instruction. If it is memory reference instruction, then we would be getting the operation code corresponding to the instruction. That means if it is LDA, then the corresponding operation code, the three bits for LDA is 010. So that is 010 we would be setting into, into our two to four bits then the rest bits would be searching it into the symbol table because in LD along with that symbol would be written. So we would be finding the corresponding address in symbol table and fetching it into the binary form and we would be storing it into our 5 to 16 bits. So out of 1 to 16 bits because instruction size is of 16 bits. So out of 1 to 16 bits, we have set 2 to 4 and 5 to 16. Now 2 to 4 is opcode and 5 to 16 is the operand in form of binary. Now the left out part is whether the instruction is direct or indirect. So that can be decided based on I. If I is written in the instruction that means it is indirect instruction. So if it is yes, then we need to set the first bit that is to be one. That is we need to set the first bit to one and then assemble all the parts. That means all assembling means bit one, then bit two to four and bit five to 16. We need to assemble it into one single form and we need to store it at the location counter specified. And again, we would be incrementing SC, scanning next line of code. Now the part remains is if instruction is not indirect, that means it is direct instruction. So simply in the first bit, we would be setting to bit to be zero and we would be assembling the parts and again incrementing LC and our cycle goes on. But the remaining part is if it is not MRI instruction, non MRI, either it would be register or it would be IO instruction. So if it is not MRI instruction and it is a valid non MRI, that means it is valid either register or IO instruction, then we would be storing the corresponding binary equivalent of the instruction location at LC. That means the corresponding binary code because we are knowing that for register reference instructions and IO instructions, the binary code are fixed because operand is not changing in that. So binary code is fixed. So we would be writing the corresponding binary code at the location counter and we would be going for the incrementing LC and again cycle works. 
but if it is not valid non mri instruction that means it is not a valid instruction uh, the register or io then we would be simply stating the error in line of code and again incrementing lc and our cycle goes on so this is what is the second pass of an assembler where actual translation operation from assembly language to binary language takes place